Kaboom! It was so huge that both Grandma Grub and Grandma Grot were both shot up into the air. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I'm just reading one of the most scary books I swear you've ever read. It's called The World's Worst Monsters by David Williams. If you get a chance, check it out. It's good. But I know that you're here for another one of my very favorite books. And yes, I have a lot of favorite books. I can have more than one, so can you. And you should find more than one book that you really enjoy to read. We are here for chapter 10 of David Williams' Mr. Steen. Now make sure you pay close attention to the story so that you can do the activities after the chapter. Let's get started with chapter 10, Slightly Chewed. Being on the political campaign trail meant Chloe knocking on what seemed like everybody's front door in the town and Mother asking people if she could rely on their vote. Those who said they were going to vote for Mother were instantly rewarded with a big smile and an even bigger sticker to put in their window, proclaiming, Vote Crumb. Those who said they weren't voting for her were going to miss an awful lot of daytime telly. Mother was the kind of person who wouldn't give up without a fight. They passed the newsagent shop. I wonder if Raj would put one of my posters up in his window, said Mother as she strode towards the store. Chloe clomped behind in her uncomfortable Sunday best shoes, struggling to keep up. Her mind had been elsewhere all day. Now she was carrying around two hot air balloon-sized secrets in her head. Mr. Stink hiding in the garden shed and her dad hiding in the cupboard under the stairs. Oh, my two favorite customers, exclaimed Raj as they entered the shop. The beautiful Miss Crumb and her charming daughter, Chloe. It's Crumb, corrected Mother. So, Raj, can I rely on your vote? Are you on the X Factor? said Raj excitedly. Yes, yes, of course I will vote for you. What are you singing on Saturday? No, she's not doing the X Factor, Raj, interjected Chloe, trying not to laugh at the thought. Britain's got talent, perhaps? You are maybe doing a ventriloquist act with a naughty otter puppet called Jeremy? That would be most amusing. No. She's not doing Britain's Got Talent either, Chloe smirked. How do you solve any dream? Will I do anything, or whatever it's called, with Graham thingy? It's the election, Raj, interrupted Mother. You know, the local election. I'm standing to be our local MP. And when is this election thing happening then? Next Friday. I can't believe you've missed it. It's all over the newspapers, Raj. Mother gestured at the pile of newspapers in the shop. Oh, I only read Nuts and Zoo, said Raj. I get all the news I need from them. Mother looked at him disapprovingly. Even though Chloe suspected, she wasn't sure what either Nuts and Zoo were. Chloe had once seen a copy of Nuts that, is, that one of the older boys had brought to school and knew it was rude. What do you think are the important issues facing Britain today, Raj? asked Mother. Delighted with the cleverosity and intelligentness of her own question, Raj pondered for a moment, then shouted over at some boys who were loitering in the pick and mix. Don't put the licorice in your mouth unless you're going to buy it, young man. Oh, dear. I will have to put that licorice on special now. Raj grabbed a pen and a piece of card. He wrote slightly chewed and put it on the licorice box. Sorry. What was the question again? Note to self, thought Chloe. Never buy licorice from this shop again. Um, now where was I? said Mother to Raj. Ah, yes. What do you think are the most important issues affecting Britain today? Raj? chimed in Raj. Oh, I didn't need to say Raj. I am Raj. Well, I think it would be great advance if Cadbury cream eggs were available not just at Easter, but all year round. They're one of my most popular items. I also strongly believe that quavers should diversify from cheese flavor to incorporate Asian chicken and lamb, Rogan Josh varieties, and most importantly, and I know this might be controversial, but I think that coffee revels should be banned as they spoil an otherwise wonderfully enjoyable confectionery. There, I've said it. Right, said Mother. And if you promise to change the government policy on those issues, you can rely on my vote, Miss Crumb. 
mother had had a mixed response to her campaigning so far and was eager to secure this potentially crucial vote. Yes, I certainly try, Raj, she said. Thank you so much, said Raj. Please help yourself to something from the shop. No, I couldn't possibly, Raj. Please, Miss Crumb, I have a nice box of Terry's all gold. I have only taken out the caramel squares. Mmm, they are delicious. And perhaps Chloe would like this finger of fudge. It's a bit squashed as my wife sat on it, but it's perfectly fine to eat. We couldn't possibly accept these kind gifts, Raj, said Mother. Well, why not buy them then? One box of Terry's all gold for four twenty nine and a finger of fudge twenty pence. That's four forty nine. Let's call it four fifty. Easier if I just take the take five. Thank you so much. Chloe and mother excited the sh exited the shop, holding their confectionery. Mother held her partially eaten box of chocolates with barely disguised disdain. Now, don't forget, Raj, the election is next Friday, said mother as she opened the door. Oh, I can't do next Friday, Miss Crumb. I have to stay here as I'm expecting a large shipment of small teas. But good luck to you. Ah, oh, thank you, replied Mother, looking crestfallen. Miss Crumb, said Raj, may I interest you in something incredibly special that will certainly become something of a family heirloom to be passed down through the generations, something your grandchildren will take proud, will one day take proudly to have valued on the Antiques Roadshow? Yes, said Mother expectantly. It's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles stationery set. And did you get your Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles stationery set? If not, you might want to stop by and see Raj's shop for one. All right, guys, you've got your task to do. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow for a little bit of hair pulling.